Snowball Spark. You want good words? Data languages. Talk real sports with a real man. Come after me. I'm a man. I'm 40. And now, here's the be-all, end-all, know-it-all of high school, college, and pro sports. Aaron Skinny Count with The Skinny on Sports. We're talking about practice, man. I'm the MVP. It's Paul Joe's. Joe, Paul Jones drug Tuesday out there, Western Oklahoma. Welcome to the Skinny on Sports right here on 98.1 FM, the sports animal. Glad to have you along for the next hour. You know, this time of year, something happens for about a month and a half or two months that not enough people pay attention to. And I'm wondering if you are. We can talk about what that is. We always make this, you and I make this plea to people to pay attention to this and no one essentially ever does but we'll try it again tonight thunder finally back in action it seems like they haven't played a game in a month with all the nba that's been going on and the thunder haven't been playing but game one thunder mavs inside the paycom center what's the biggest key to the series in your mind uh what about the mavs scares you and how or can oklahoma city combat it What's the biggest advantage for either team? I put rank the top 10 players. We may have to drag that down to say the top five, which I think is simple. And that's why I went to 10. But I, I'm going to use that. I was using 10 to illustrate a point. Who's going to win? What's your prediction on the series between the Thunder and the Mavs? Also in the NBA playoffs, how surprised are you that Minnesota has went into Denver and won both? And last night just smoked them. And then the Knicks, Ooh. the conspiracy theorists are out today. Get the Knicks in the Eastern Conference Finals. Moving screens on both sides, one called, one not. Both benefited the Knicks, but a fun game, as we thought it would be. That may be a fun series between Knicks and Pacers, and it's cool just to see Knicks and Pacers on the floor together in the NBA playoffs. Also, high school sports, got 4A golf, boys' state tournament, up in Shangri-La, results after day one. Look at what's going on today. Obviously, Sean's still there. He'll have updates throughout the day from the 4A Boys State Golf Tournament, Shangri-La. Also, we do have a bracket. It's official. We have a 4A baseball bracket we could talk about as well. 225-9698 is the phone or the text line. That is 225-9698. Give us a call, shoot us a text. We can talk about any of those things or whatever else might be on your mind. Feel free to chime right in at 225-9698. If you're going to be outside the listening area, a couple ways to stay in touch with the show. One of those is to log on to kadsam.com. The other is to download the app. The app's got it all. It's got radio. It's got the Penny News. Brand new edition of the Penny News will hit the website tonight at midnight. Thepennynews.com. Check it out online there. And also Big Elk and Paragon TV. Mentioned Sean with the updates today on Big Elk TV, Big Elk TV's Facebook page from the 4A Golf Tournament. And then we will be... We will be on... Big Elk TV? I got distracted. Yeah. We'll, be on P, we'll be on Big Elk TV on Thursday. So Thursday, Big Elk TV, hanging out. At the baseball tournament, 4 o'clock is the scheduled start time for the Elks and Chickasha. So that's what we got uh, there with your ability to listen. What's going on? I don't know. Anyhow, and then, of course, the Skinny on Sports podcast is available each and every place where podcasts drop. How are you today? Uh, I'm good. How are you? Doing well. Man, I... Am I the, am I only one of the only ones to uh Oh, I see what she's saying. We may have somebody trying to call. Well, every time someone calls it goes to the uh voicemail thing. Yeah, but if, if I see it and I know who it is, I can uh, okay. answer it. Okay. Anyhow. Yeah. And she I think that's what she was trying to tell us. Also doesn't look like this phone's working. I checked the no, no, no. Just the phone itself. I'm talking about, no, just the phone. Oh, uh, the phone doesn't work? The phone well, doesn't look we can't take a call. like it's supposed to. <laughs> we don't have a, because of the power surge, I bet we can't, we can't. Uh, there, there is a dial tone. 
Okay. Didn't look like one. Heck, which one do you think is Parks? Because you know it doesn't have like the park here. I don't know which one's Park Seven One. Nothing's writ. Nothing's lit up. Top one, top right. I think it's top right. Yeah. All right, let's try it. Anybody there? Yeah, I don't know. We've got we got a mess on our hands over here on the phone. Well, I just lost internet on this side. Huh? Did I you? just lost internet, so maybe that's oh, so why. Did I. Maybe we don't have that's why the phone because we don't have the internet and we don't. <clears throat> yeah, not have, yet, Will. We don't have a stream and now is not the time to call. We don't, we don't have, have internet. We don't listeners. have phones. Oh, we'll give you the heads up when it is time to call. Okay, how about that? Yeah, yeah, I, I just did too. It's a good thing we're on the air, Jared, or we'd have dead air. Yeah. Coming from uh, the boys in the city. All right, so this has been a discombobulated start to the Paul Jones Drug Tuesday right here on the Skinny on Sports. Um, so am I – let me ask you this. Are you as interested in what happened in the weather as I am? I had it on all night. Yeah, it's I, I mean, I have a hard time turning Until it, it was – until I thought we're in the clear, and then I turned it. I missed. I'll be honest with you. I missed the Knicks Pacers game because I was watching the weather. I was real nervous about it. I, I had that anxiety feeling going on, keeping a close eye on it. But then it, it was kind of timed out where it was it, where I thought okay we're okay. It was, it's pushed off. I was I turned it to uh, Denver and the Minnesota uh, slaughtering. But no, I was watching. We don't have a phone. Internet. We don't have internet in here. Okay. Uh, I watched the weather the entire night. I did flip it over for the last, like, two or three minutes of the Knicks game. That crowd was rocking. Anybody that, I mean, I know Thunder fans out there, you want to proclaim yourself, without a doubt, the best that there ever was as far as fans. And, you know what, maybe there's some truth to that at times, but... To disrespect the crowd at MSG is a little bit embarrassing because that crowd, when it's rolling like it was last night, it's absolutely as good well, as it gets. I've always said the NBA is better when when the Knicks are good because of of New York New York and basketball. Come on. Like the mid-90s when they were rocking and rolling with, with Patrick Ewing and all them. 100%. Yeah. So that's 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 what I was excited about. And I'm all in on the conspiracy theory. Let's get them to the Eastern Conference Finals <laughs> against Boston. You know, and of course, the Knicks fans will say, "Really, we've gone all these years without the number one pick." When Patrick Ewing, for instance, you know, there was that. But as soon as that happened, um, that was the end of uh, the opportunity for them to have the number one pick. But uh, all right, Will, you can. I think you can fire off yeah. soon here in about five minutes. But anyhow, they. Uh, it was good. It, it was fun. It was down to the wire, and, and we can talk about the, the calls and, and what's happening today. All right, 4A golf. State tournament at Shangri-La. Shangri-La over about as far away as you can get uh, from here to there. And We've done it. Yeah, we have. <laughs> we went to Grove a couple of years ago in uh, the, the football playoffs in the, in the second round. Just, what, two years or three years ago now, I guess it was. Yesterday, the Elks struggled. There's no other way to put it. They shot 329, 322. They set in 10th place, which is uh, well but well off the pace. Plainview, which it's kind of weird how, how things work, right? It, playoffs, you had Plainview last week right here in the, air, in the uh, regional tournament. There was a point down the stretch where you weren't sure Plainview was going to make it to the state tournament. They were pretty close. They were right. They were they were always going to be in third. Were they going to be third? Were they going to be fourth? You just didn't know exactly where they were going to end up. They sneak in the third spot, and now you look up, and Plainview is leading the state tournament after the first two the first two rounds on day one. Indians shoot twenty one over par as a team. A big part of why they're in first is Jace Cheney. Jace Cheney seven under par yesterday in the two rounds. Just fantastic from him. Um, obviously, his I remember his sister being a really good player yeah. uh, that went to Oklahoma City University. So Jace Cheney, 7-under, leading by 5 over Crossings Christian sophomore Jackson Magnus. Magnus was one of the guys in the playoff here for the regional title on uh, 
last Monday. And so you got those guys there. So it, it is um, the leader of the team competition is Plainview. Plainview six ahead of Crossings Christian. Crossings was the regional champ out here. So, so there's a six shot difference there. And then the only other team with a realistic chance would be Oklahoma Christian Schools. OCS is the defending champ team. Team champ also had the individual champ last year with Ryder uh, Cowan. They're nine back at thirty over, plus twenty one. So those are the. That's going to be a three a three team race today. They're all going to play with each other. So they'll all kind of, you know, if you're OCS, you've got a chance to to get started right. Get started a little bit early. Put some pressure on those two teams in front of you. And, and they're kind of the team with nothing to lose, in my mind. Play really well and see if you can watch the two in front of you fold. That's a and just dangerous kind of wilt team. Down. That's a dangerous team. And you got nothing to lose, yeah. I think so, too. I, <clears throat> I'll be real interested to see how it starts. And if they can, you know, jump out, make a couple of birdies for a couple of guys, and next thing you know, you look up and, uh-oh, say they're f- two or three under and the other teams are – two or three over and they've cut that lead almost in half or even more uh, it could be get real interesting mm-hmm. uh if the saints can get started early crossings christian obviously only six back that's two shots by three guys make up on your on your team and and the truth of it is with plain view man I, I wonder how you know you get seven under from one guy that obviously helps so any you know small little drop off from him some other guys are going to have to play maybe a little bit better than they did yesterday, but it's going to be a good race, I think, down to the wire. As I mentioned, the Big Elks, 75 over, two, 329, 322. They're way, way back uh, of the lead, of that lead pack for sure. Realistically, the Elks, 13 behind Cushing for seventh, so that's probably a bit too far. Maybe you can catch Woodward that's eight ahead of you for eighth. So a middle of the pack, hopeful finish, and if the Elks can play well today, um, yesterday, first round, uh, just an uncharacteristic round from Braden, Braden Duncan, who tied for the regional medalist honors uh, yesterday, just didn't have it in round one. Shot eighty five, and that was actually the score that got dropped. If you'd have told me that before the tournament started, I would have either said, "Wow, the Elks are in the mix," or "Uh oh." The Oaks have no chance, and it turns out it was the latter of those two. But uh, he shot 85 yesterday in round one. Tristan Dunn led the Oaks with an 80. Blake Red 81, and then two 84s from Keaton Fer- uh, Kasten Ferris and Keaton Twyman. Then in round two, Braden got back to his normal self. A two over par, 74. Tristan Dunn played well at 75, and then they had 84 from Ferris, and they needed either Blake or, or Keaton to play well, or really two of those last three to try to jump back up into the mix and just didn't happen. 84 from Ferris, Keaton Twyman shot 89, and so did Blake Red. So, you know, kind of wasted a couple of good rounds at the top of your of your list with nobody else being able to back it up and, and try to make up a little bit of ground on some of those leaders. If you could have shot, you know, somewhere in the low to right at 300, you're moving way up the board. Instead, they weren't able to get it done. And so another, th- another score in the 320s, and that's what puts the Elks all the way down into 10th, and then uh, Weatherford's 12th. The Eagles, first round, they had an 82 from Jackson Smith, an 82 from Ethan Sage, an 86 from Tate Sage. Yukon Butler shot a 90, and then Witten Beam had an 86. Second round for the Eagles, 84 from Smith, Ethan Sage, 82, Tate Sage, 81. Yukon Butler, a 94, but then Witten Beam came back with a 76, the so best round of the tournament for the Eagles. They shot 323 in the afternoon, and they <laughs> shot uh, 336 in round one. And so that puts them in 12th place, headed into the day-to-day. Tea times looking like first tea time in Elk City and Weatherford will play together. Eh, let's see. Da, 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 da. 10-10. So 10-10 for the first tea time uh, for the Elks, since that means Sean probably still snoring. <laughs> Probably, <laughs> probably still snoring at the moment. I wonder if the, I was I was I was curious last hour. I didn't stay up or track how far east those storms went. If it if it uh, I don't know, I don't know if it got rough over that way, but maybe 
I mean, it's a good thing it came over overnight. There's no delay. You ever not seen any kind of delay or anything like no. that? Not, not too wet conditions? <clears throat> I know I did. I was told it was pretty wet over there uh-huh. uh, as far as the, the practice round or looking on the website. Let's see, on the OSSA website. A lot of times they'll have that updated immediately. No, don't see anything yet. Good. So I would assume that that thing's a full go. Maybe they already did push back the times just a little. 10 seems like a pretty late start, to be honest with you. I sound like it. So maybe they did. Just one round, though? Yeah, it's just one today. And so maybe they already have kind of pushed that an hour or so to let the the grounds crew have the time to get the golf course ready. But Big Elk TV all day long. There will be updates throughout the day in the progress of that 4A Boys State Golf Tournament. Also, yesterday, we – listen, we knew the bracket, but it wasn't official. Uh, the 4A state baseball tournament bracket was released, and it's exactly what I was told. Noble High School will be the site on Thursday and Friday. The finals will be played at Bricktown Ballpark on Saturday. First game of the day will be number one Tuttle and number eight Cushing. That'll be an 11 o'clock start, followed by the 4 5 matchup of Hildell and Marlowe. Then you get the Big Elks and Chickasha. That's the three against the six. Four o'clock, Noble High School on Thursday. If you don't remember, we were right. Sure enough, Noble was the site two years ago of the semifinals when it rained in Sal or in uh, Shawnee. Yeah, and then Noble was where the Elks and Tuttle played for the first of two straight semifinal games. That was the one where Tuttle came back from down two in the bottom of the seventh, one on a perfectly executed suicide squeeze uh, to win the game. That field at Noble there will be the host. And as we learned yesterday, back then it was a completely natural grass field. Now there's some turf Mm. on the infield, grass on the outfield. Advantage Elks? I don't know. Chickasha, they play on grass, I believe, or it used to be. Oh, they turfed up their football field. They turfed up the football field, so maybe they got everything. They've done some nice things at Chickasha. Yeah, I don't know. That track is sweet. Their Their track. Their track. Track the actual and field track, track. track. Yes. Yeah. Remember Daniel telling us about that process? No. When we were there? No. Oh, is it around their football field or is yeah. it separate? Is it? It's right there. I, I'm just – some 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 facilities – listen, we've been to a lot of football fields, so they all kind of blur. Some just give up on their track that was once that used around their football field right. and they move it to a separate location. I couldn't remember if Chick Shea was no, one. They, they still it. use it's it. It's a sweet one, too. Is it, is it purple? It was kind of like – Light gray and maybe a little bit light purple, oh, cool. maybe. But hey, they didn't, hey, state listen, of the art. Tip the cap to them. I remember <clears throat> one year we went there. There wasp in the press box. Yeah. They did everything they could to get the wasp out. They're smacking them out, spraying them out. They took care of us. That was COVID year, wasn't it? Showed up on a Saturday afternoon. Yeah, it was OU Texas. Yeah, and then Jerry Don Bray. He was. Yeah. He had. Was, he may have bought Walmart out of wasp killer yeah. that day. He kept apologizing. Like, yeah. What can you do? This is an act of God. This is nothing. And, and then, you know what it told me? Hmm. You know, because the rules back then were if you met, you had to lock everything up for two weeks, right? Right. And that's and what he did. that told me that they they did not f- fudge on the rules. No, they literally unlocked it and wasp went everywhere. They had to go figure out a way to kill yeah. them. <laughs> And then what two seasons or last season was the last time we returned. Yeah. And they totally redid their press box. Yes. It is nice. Yeah, our side is beautiful. Very nice. Plenty of room. There's always plenty of room there. Yep. Yeah, chicken shades all grass. I knew it was at one point. Yeah, they're they're very they're very pro they've been very proactive with their athletic department. So you've got that one at four and then the final game of the night is uh the Two seed Blanchard against the seventh seed Newcastle. That will be a six thirty first pitch. I tempted to stick around for that, but I think we'll be ready to get back home. But uh, of course, that's the next round game. So yeah, that'd be possible. Um, of course, you'd know by that point if you want to stay around and see who you play tomorrow. If you mm-hmm. want to go home because uh, it's over, pitching matchup is going to be awesome. I'm just sure. Uh, well, I know who the Elks are going to throw. With cash, and I would imagine that that Coach James, and of course everybody knows him out here as Lumpy, coach at Sayre for a long time, very successful. Uh, they are UConn now, Chickasha. Uh, I would imagine Leighton Bryan will get the ball for him in in the game as well. So it's going to be a really good matchup uh, on the mound between the Elks and the Chicks. These two teams played a month from yesterday, a month back, 
And uh, Lane J from Chickasha hit a home run, solo home run in the top of the seventh inning to give the Chicks a 5-4 win that day against the Big Elks. Of course, last year they played in the regional tournament here. Uh, Chickasha has seen cash. They saw him that, that day a year ago. So <clears throat> lots of fun. It's going to be a lot of fun uh, to see kind of how these two teams have, have grown since a year ago. And, you know, like Jay said, uh, Brian, is a, he's a dude. He's a stud. He's going to give the Elks. So he came in, through to the last two batters, shut it down. Um, in the game here, struck out Mayfield and struck out Boyd, three four in the the Big Elks lineup to close that game. And so it's going to be, you know, it's going to be. I would imagine runs at an absolute premium. I would not be shocked to see the chicks bun a little bit. Because we saw a year ago in that semifinal loss to Tuttle, kind of a bugaboo was being able to cover bunts and allowed some extra outs that allowed some extra runs to score. I would not be shocked whatsoever if we don't see a little bit of that, especially early on uh, until uh, maybe the Elks can convince Coach James that they can cover bunts. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that would, that would not shock me at all, especially with as dominant as Cash has been as well. <clears throat> with nobody, with people just not being able to touch the ball. Right. So that's coming up on Thursday. We'll take a break. When do we come back? Did you forget the Thunder were even in the playoffs? It's been so long since they played. <laughs> Tonight, game one, second round series, the Thunder and the Mavs. All right, Will, give us a call. We can talk to you. We'll be back. Paul Jones Drug Tuesday right here on the Skinny on Sports. Paul Jones Drug is Elk City's most experienced compounding pharmacy, meaning they can custom make your prescription medications to your doctor's specifications, safely and effectively providing you with exactly what you need. And for your convenience, Paul Jones Drug has a drive through pickup window as well as curbside service for testing and vaccinations and offers free local delivery. Just a couple reasons you should choose Paul Jones Drug, 809 North Main Street in Elk City. I'm Rodney Skinner with Paul Jones Drug, and I promise we provide care you can trust. The Skinny on Sports. It's in the hole. Welcome back. Skinny on Sports, 98.1 FM, the sports animal. Hanging out on a Paul Jones Drug Tuesday. Paul Jones Drug, 809 North Main, right in here. <clears throat> Excuse me, right here in Elk City. Paul Jones Drug is care. You can trust our man Rodney Skinner and the gang down at Paul Jones Drug are the oldest compounding pharmacy in Elk City. That means they are the most experienced compounders. They've got free local, local delivery drive through pickup. You can get tested curbside, vaccinated curbside. Also, their blister packs. It's what they call their long-term care unit packaging. I'll tell you all about Paul Jones Drug throughout the show. We appreciate Rodney and all the gang down there at Paul Jones Drug. Also, Jared, you know what today is? It's Tuesday. Today is Tuesday. What does that mean? I think that would be the chicken fried steak special at Boomtown? That's exactly what it means. Every Tuesday, the special is the $5 chicken fry with one side down at the Boomtown Grill, 2103 South Main right here in Elk City. Man, if even, but if you don't want chicken fry, if you're watching watching your figure, they've got something for you as well. They've got different seafood options. They've got delicious salads, a house salad, a grilled chicken salad, a steak salad, a bunch of different options for Sandwiches, get pizzas, pastas. Boomtown Grill open every single day of the week. Happy hour two to six, Monday through Friday. Open eleven to ten, Sunday through Thursday, eleven to eleven on Friday and Saturday. That is our friends at the Boomtown Grill. Speaking of Boomtown, what better place would there be to take in Game One of the Western Conference semifinals tonight between the Oklahoma City Thunder? And the Dallas Mavericks. Oklahoma City has not played since a week ago. Dallas played on Friday, which that gives them a little bit of a rest instead of having to play Sunday in a game, a potential game seven against the Clippers and then turn around and play tonight. Oklahoma City swept New Orleans in the first round series. Dallas defeated the Clippers four games to two. In your mind... What is the biggest key to this series? My, I would think 
we know who the Thunder have with their big names. And we know who Dallas has, and it stops at two for me with Kyrie and Lucas. So who's that third option? Who's that third guy for Dallas? I think that's key. Who? Because you know, that's what the playoffs are about is you see guys. I mean, look what's happening in, in Minnesota with Anthony Edwards. He's becoming the superstar, right? I mean, he was a star. Uh, but he's becoming, he's elevated himself. So I, I want to know who's going to become that third person, maybe not become an Ant-Man, but become a guy that's going to elevate, complement those two. Because it's been those two, and it's working now. There was some question if that tra- after that trade happened and after a few games in, if it's even working between Luka and Kyrie. And I'll touch on that a little bit later. But I want, I think that's a key for me, is for Dallas anyways, who's that third guy that steps up and go, okay, they got a real, they got a thing going on here with these three. So that 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 for me, who be, who who fills out their big three? <clears throat> yeah, and I don't think it's going to be the same guy every time because I don't think they have anybody that's consistent enough to do that. But when you look at Gafford in the paint, Tim Hardaway, it looks like he is going to play. Where there were some rumblings about his availability, it does look like he's going to give it a go. You know, he he's been a guy that's made shots in this league as a a complimentary piece. Maxi Kleba doesn't look like he's going to play, which that would be a guy, another guy that they could, you know, at any given game might get a five for seven from three out of like he showed in that first round. Mm-hmm. You know, Jones is more of a defensive guy. It feels like Lively is more of a defensive guy. And that leaves, if there is somebody that can do it consistently for the Mavericks, I think it's PJ Washington. PJ Washington's been a really good three point shooter throughout his time in this league. He's been able to, and, and on bad teams, you know, and not, not with the quality of shots that he gets now due to the focus of everybody's defense being so heavily on Kyrie or on Luka. So if there was a guy that was able to consistently be that third option for Dallas throughout the series, I would lean toward P.J. Washington being that guy. Um, but I just don't know if there's anybody consistent enough. Like, you know, you look at Oklahoma City – you figure on Chet, mm-hmm. you know, somewhere between 15 and who knows how many if he really gets hot. But you, you kind of figure on him as the third scorer. I just don't know if you can count on anybody from Dallas, but they, they do have enough different guys. And those other two, with Luka and Kyrie, man, that's – it's it, the next question, what kind of scares you? And it's the ability to me in a seven-game series – of Luca going crazy twice, Kyrie going crazy twice, and all of a sudden you look up and you go, dang, they beat us. Yeah. Because you just could not stop the offensive explosion that those guys are absolutely capable of and have proven to be capable of not only in the regular season but in the playoffs. I mean, you think about that team a couple of years ago that Luca took to the Western Conference Finals I mean, that, that was reminiscent of an early Cleveland Cavs LeBron team where you look around on that roster and you go, who in the world are these guys? But Luka was so dominant offensively that he was able to carry that team that far. And then obviously Kyrie, you know, he, he becomes a little bit of a lost, guy, a lost man in the, the history of playoff basketball. you got to realize he's now 13-0 and in closeout games. And he's, he's averaged over 30 in those closeout games. I mean, a lot is always gets made of LeBron and this and that, but we got to remember who made the biggest shot of that series against the Golden State Warriors back in 2016. It wasn't LeBron James. It was Kyrie Irving from the right wing at Dagger 3 that ended up being the eventual game winner for the Cavs come back from down 3-1 against the Golden State Warriors. So those guys and their offensive skill – is almost, I mean, honestly, probably the most skilled duo offensively in the league. I completely agree. Completely agree. And and when, it, like I said, when they are, when they're clicking, and the cohesiveness is working, and the chemistry is working, that is a that is scary. If you're a Thunder fan, very scary. And it worked that last series. That you saw how they closed out the Clippers. They made the Clippers look silly, in my opinion. They made them look discombobulated and unorganized, and even old at times. And 
they uh, so they're again I go back to saying again that the, there were questions was this trade going to work Kyrie and Luca I I'm, I'm I'll shut the book on that I think it's working and it's good so this that's why it kind of excites me just as an overall fan of this series what the the, the uh, athleticism on the floor at one time is going to go through the roof it's going to be great do you expect Dallas, we, we saw them as much as anybody else in the regular season matchups, especially once they made uh, the trades that they did at the deadline, played Oklahoma City twice after that. Do you expect them to continue to employ the defensive strategy of basically we're going to guard them four on uh, five on four, let Josh Giddy be wide open? Mm. Do you expect that to continue? Maybe to a lesser extent because Josh has shot the ball well. He did in that last series, so they're probably they'll probably experiment with it, and they probably have to make an adjustment on the fly, which is very uh, risky. You don't like to see that from your team uh, if you're a Dallas fan to see them uh, make mid mid game adjustments. Sometimes it works and it looks genius, and sometimes it, it looks silly. But um, I, I think they might. I think they'll say. Yeah, let's see if he can actually start hitting. Because he, he hit some get shots late in games, right, against New Orleans. and So they might start it early and go, let's see let's see what we got. Let's see if he can start hitting early. If he can't, let's continue to to to, uh, to do this against him. Or, so they or played, not against him. <laughs> these two teams played one time back in February where Doncic and Kyrie both played. And they used their centers – to guard Giddy, which basically meant sagged way off of him and was able to clog the paint with the drives of, of J Dub or, yeah, or SGA. Like, hey, shoot it so I can rebound it. Yeah, yeah, and okay, you know what he shot? Three of fourteen from the field, three of nine from three. Oklahoma City was outscored by twenty three in his twenty three minutes on the court. The problem with that is for the Thunder. Not only is that horrifically in, inefficient offensively. Now Dallas isn't one of those teams. They're nothing like New Orleans a, a, a series ago, where their rebounding scares you to death. Dallas was like 25th in rebounding margin. The Thunder were 28th, so that's very, very, very similar. Dallas is not a good offensive rebounding team either. But with Giddy, the, the one thing about Giddy's offense taking him off the court is then that makes the, thund- the Thunder even that more vulnerable and susceptible to offensive rebounds. Now. With what the Mavs have done all year long, it's it doesn't seem to be that big a concern. But, you know, we even saw Giddy play himself into the closing lineups in that game one and in that round one series because he wasn't a liability on the offensive end, which then obviously helped defensive rebound in those clutch situations. I think that's the part. You know, obviously missing threes, and not being able to be off, you know, efficient at all on offense is a, is a big concern. But also taking Giddy's rebounding off the floor, even though Dallas isn't that great at it. It's still the, obviously the major weakness of this team and has been all year for, for Oklahoma City is clearing those defensive gla- clearing the defensive glass. And Giddy's a needs to be a big part of that. I thought we saw after game one against New Orleans, he made it more of a point. Now he's grabbing six or seven a game, and the Thunder either right there or just barely behind in the rebounding, not into the double digits behind on the on the glass in that first series, what's the biggest advantage for either team? I'm diving into my memory because I lost internet, so I lost my notes. Uh, well, clearly home court advantage for for OKC. Uh, some people kind of scoff at it, but I thought that was big for them to get the one seed so that they can have home court advantage throughout. I and we mentioned the fans. I that they they're big, so I, I like that. Um, and maybe, and I, I keep leaning on the the two headed monster of Kyrie and Luca. Well, then Oklahoma City has SGA, J Dub, Chet, Lou Dort defensively. Anyways, I feel like there's a little bit more athleticism on the Oklahoma City side. Yeah, I think it's depth. I think it's the amount of bodies. I was about bodies. to say depth, but I, then I'm thinking, well, what? Where on the bench is the depth? I, I think it's depth, and I think it's. Being able to throw guys, not necessarily depth on the offensive end, even though you know Isaiah Joe has been a guy that's yeah. proved he can make shots, but it's throwing multiple people 
at Kyrie or at Luka throughout the game on the defensive end. Obviously, you would assume Lou Dort gets the gets the, the call on uh, Luka Doncic to start. How the whistle blows or how it doesn't blow will be a huge key to this series because you know, obviously Dort is kind of the – he's the, the head of the snake on the defensive end for Oklahoma City. So that that's uh, something to watch. But then when you think about, okay, is it SGA falling around Kyrie? Case and Wallace, I would assume, first off the bench maybe, even to, to check in to guard Kyrie Irving. I, I would I would bet you throughout this series there will be very few – if it, in the competitive games in the series, I bet you there are very, very, very few minutes, if any, in which either Lou Dort or Casey Wallace isn't on the floor for Oklahoma City. And that's a, kind of a mouthful to say about a rookie – and it's for, but here's the deal: they're all kind of rookies, right? In in, the, in their first playoff runs, yeah, it's a rookie it, run. It's yeah. kind of everybody is, even though you know SGA and Dort played in the bubble. That's not this. That was just games in a location, right? Well, that kind of brings me to my my ex my uh, advantage for Dallas. Can can we call? Can we say they're more experienced? Oh, they're 100 percent more right, experienced, right? With even Luca, what you mentioned when he took him to the Western Conference Finals, and we all know about Kyrie. So that's where I think they have an advantage. And they're they, not. Sh- they want this big game. They they're not shy from it. They're they ha- they've been here. No close games, and and that's probably one of the biggest advantages that they do have. Close games down the stretch, you've got two guys that are absolutely not scared to take a shot. And you got two guys that can create their own shot or create a shot for each other or for somebody else. You know, just exhibit A, Kyrie putting, uh, who was that? Was it uh, P.J. Tucker in the blender the other day and making that three in the corner that basically sealed the game? You know, he's made a shot. Kyrie Irving has made a shot to win the NBA Finals. Oklahoma City, as much as we've seen Jada be good in the clutch, we've seen SGA be good in the clutch, those were regular season games. We have not. Now, Dort, you know, if you want to use the bubble, both of those guys had 30-point games as essentially rookies way back then in that in that series against Houston. But we haven't seen anybody on Oklahoma City's team make a shot that really matters in the playoffs. Yet, and we've seen the other guys do it a bunch. Who's the best player in this series? I I, I don't want to cop out and say it's a tie, but I'll give the edge to SGA because a lot of people consider him number two in the MVP race. But on his heels is Luca. But I think Luca's come on. He's come on strong here lately. But SGA has been more consistent all season long. I'll 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 be the homer and say SGA. I think if you're talking about players, it's one of those two. But in the play, I'm I'm not. I think it's Kyrie. As far as a playoff basketball player, I think he's proven way more than anybody else on the floor in the playoffs. And I think it's a possibility that Dallas has the two best players in the series. But after that. The Thunder may have the next four, five, six. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It, it, it's, it really does feel like this shapes up to two guys versus a young team, to me. Now, they're not going to score every single point. I get it. They're, they're going to get contributions from other places. but And I think this bodes well for the Thunder and the way that they can play defense. When the game gets late, when it gets into crunch time, I think you start to see the Mavericks really start to use isolation basketball, and that only plays in to the Thunder's hands because of what Dort can do guarding guys on the ball, what we saw Cason Wallace be able to do at the end of game one against C.J. McCollum, make him take an incredibly tough shot um, in a one-on-one ISO situation. The other guys... You know, Chet's ability to guard at the rim is completely underrated. Everybody thinks it can't happen because, you know, you see the one play of Gafford kind of shoving Zubak out of the way and dunking on him from game six. Okay, that's one play. 
But start go go back and look at the the numbers of of defending the rim that Chet put up this year. It's <laughs> it's astounding for a dude that seemingly that frail and that small. And I think maybe that's the underrated part of him is he's a heck of a lot tougher than anybody realizes. He just maybe not has the build of, of what you need. But I think it's fascinating. I think Oklahoma City to me. They have the right components to beat this Mavericks team because I think they can guard, do a, a good enough job guarding Kyrie and Luka to where they're going to force somebody else in the Mavericks to beat them. And I just simply don't think they have a good enough supporting cast to help those guys out enough to win four out of seven against the Thunder. So you're picking the Thunder? Yes. I went back and forth on how many games. I think I'm going to pick the Thunder in five. Oh, wow. Five. I think so. I we're, think a lot of... We're going to... I think a whole bunch of this... This is going to be an uncomfortable series for you and me. Oh, are you think? Uh, are you going to trade her out and pick the Mavs to win the series? I don't know. Well, you're going to have to. It's time. I mean, I, I really respect your opinion. You're saying Thunder in Who five. Wins? I'm like, wow. That is <clears throat> bold, Cotton. Listen, I, 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 I go back to the Thunder and their youth and, and how I keep go, also going back to we're way ahead of schedule in, in this process of where they're going to be. And it's been a luxury. It's been awesome to see. Sweep in New Orleans, here at the chance to get to the Western Conference Finals. I mean, again, way ahead of schedule. But I, I keep leaning on the experience side. Kyrie knows how to win here. Luke has been here. He's 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 looking to take that next step too. Um, I might regret this, but I'm going to go with Dallas in seven, winning on the home floor. Yeah, of Oklahoma City. Wow. Yep. I th- I see. I thought you were going to say Dallas in six. That way they close it out at home. No, I think it's going to be a fantastic series. I mean, the, the, it really is kind of the glitz and the glamour of two superstars versus. A young team. I mean, let's not forget, Oklahoma City was seven games better than Dallas in the regular season. Now, I know we, we beat the drum of the playoffs being different than the regular season. And you can probably also point to the trade that was made and, and helping the Mavericks kind of boost them up to where they are. But, man, that's a big O difference. And if Oklahoma City's – and I, I just believe that Oklahoma City has more good players – and I, and I do believe that defensively they have the right kind of makeup to at least slow those guys down. And if they just slow those guys down, Force. who else is going to pick up the slack and, and for Dallas? That's right. It goes back to who completes that. That's right. Who's Who else is going to be that guy? I, I, I agree there. That's that's kind of where I'm at on it. That's a key. It's a key to this series. Now, when Dort gets three someone. fouls in the first two minutes because Luke is whining, you want to talk about a guy that's not going to like this. You know who isn't going to enjoy this series? Luca, he's going to be so sick of Lou Dort, you can't even imagine. And you know who else is going to be sick of Luca? The Thunder fans. Luca no. is about to be the first villain of this Thunder run. <laughs> I'm telling you. Yeah. I don't think there's any doubt. Who, Lu- who was the first in the the previous Thunder run? It had to be like Zebo, right? Yeah. Was that bef- was that series before or after the Russ injury? Before. Okay. Yeah. Before. So he played the Lakers the first year and got beat. Then the next year beat the Nuggets. Then played the Grizzlies because they had upset San Antonio. Yeah. And beat them to get to Dallas. And then Dallas obviously got won down. the Western Conference Finals. Yeah. But I think – I'm going to say Zach Randolph – was the first real Thunder villain because they had a couple of series right in there in a row. Of course, there's the one where he uh, headbutted, was it Adams? He headbutted Steven Adams and got himself um, uh, suspended for a game seven. Yeah. I'd say it was him. Patrick Beverly right on his heels. He's right there. Patrick Beverly's up there. So is Draymond with, Draymond. with the infamous. Kick to the kick to the to middle spot. Poor, poor Stephen Adams again. Yeah, Stephen Adams. Maybe Stephen Adams is everybody's villain because people kept <laughs> picking on him. Yeah. 
It's going to be fun. You can hear it right here. 7 o'clock pregame, 8.30 tip between the Oklahoma City Thunder, Dallas Mavericks, game one of the Western Conference semifinals. When we return, we'll talk about the other two series from last night. Question on the text line, are the Wolves really going to sweep the Nuggets? I don't know. And there's also something going on that's one of the best things in sports. We'll tell you about it next. Paul Jones Drug offers a free service that makes taking your daily medication safe and easy. It's called convenience packaging, meaning they can combine all of your daily medications and put them in sealed separate daily packages. This process replaces you from having to fill your daily medication dispenser. And as always, Paul Jones Drug prepares individual blister packaging for long-term care patients. With their drive through window, curbside service, and free local delivery, it's just more reasons you should choose Paul Jones Drug. 809 North Main Street, Milk City. I'm Rodney Skinner with Paul Jones Drug, and I promise we provide care you can trust the skinny on sports but is having this minor skill worth being so unattractive that's for the fan to decide yay welcome back skinny on sports final segment of a paul jones drug tuesday you know jared i see my wife she's got the she doesn't have like say medications but she has vitamins and whatnot Mm -hmm. and she loads up the pill caddy like every week and i always think to myself i wonder if she's got that right does she have the right pills on the right day is there something going on you know and how easy would that be to mess up right yeah kind of scary if you think it is it. and that's just for vitamins just think about vitamins. if it was like pills that you needed to make you well or you couldn't cross them up and that could cause some problems guess what at paul jones drug you don't have to worry about that they have something called convenience packaging which that is individual packaging of their day of your daily medications. So you can throw away your pill caddy. You can not worry about trying to put the right dose on the right day and the right pill. All you have to do is open up the package, take your pills, and you're off on the day. And you have complete confidence that it was right because Paul Jones Drug did it. That's the convenience packaging that they provide down there at Paul Jones Drug. Also, they've got the durable medical equipment, which is the walkers, the canes, the crutches, the wraps, and all that kind of stuff. Most insurances are accepted, and also gifts and greeting cards. What's coming up all across western Oklahoma here in a couple of weeks? Well, graduations of... Graduations. That's already kicked off. I mean, some have already happened. Some have already happened. Some are, like you said, coming up. Coming up. They've got gifts. They've got greeting cards, graduation cards. What a great spot. To go get all of those things, a one-stop shop down at Paul Jones Drug, eight hundred nine North. And Bay. and did you mention Mother's Day? That's Mother's Day. Mother's Day Sunday. Sunday. Mother's Day is, is Sunday. Some I more. have to keep saying it out loud to remind myself. I need yes. to get Miss Allie something. Yeah. Oh, now wait a minute. She's not your mother. She's the mother of my children. She's the mother of your children. She's though. the mother of my children. Yes. So you go. And, she talks you into that. Did she talk you into that, or did you decide that on your own? Oh no. This is this is all me. Okay. This is all me. And then, of course, I have my mother-in-law. That's right. I mean, i got many women in my life I can get, that are mom figures. So, But, yeah, Paul Jones Drug, they got it's more than just a pharmacy. Oh, yeah. It's got everything. My wife was nice enough to get my mother her Mother's Day present. Well, very good. Now you got to get care of some. No, she's not my mother. <laughs> okay. Good luck with that. Wyatt can get her something. That's his mother. <laughs> Is that not the way it works? Well, I mean, hey, Aaron, can I borrow some money? So technically it's coming from you. No. He's going to be asking for some money. He, I looked on his nightstand this morning. Yeah. And he has saved up money that he's gotten from me or Kara or whoever that concession stands through these baseball games. He's got enough to buy her a car over there. So he just piled up on the. He gets like a $10 bill for him. He gets a Coke and pockets the rest. It's what it appears to happen. Yeah. My kid does the opposite. I give her a $10 bill for the concession stand. Oh, hey, hey. So-and-so, hey, Laney, you need something? Hey, Laney, you want something? Hey, I got, hey, Trapper, come here. I got. She spends every dime of it, not just on herself, but everybody. Yeah, that happens with Wyatt as well. How do you get away with giving a 10? Well, I don't get That's just an example. Okay. I was going to say, a lot of times I try to give a 10, and he grabs a 20 before I can yeah, snatch I it say, back out of his all, hand. All I carry are 20s, so. What do you do? Whoa, high roller. <laughs> Just kidding. Good grief. I am kidding. Look at you go. I hardly carry any cash All I've got is 20s. All I've got is hundos. 
I, I would you ever theoretically you know would you ever if all you had was a one hundred dollar bill mm-hmm. and I know I, let's say Katie because she's the oldest came up and was like I'm dying of thirst can I take I need some money for the concession stand it would you ever just hand it and let her go yeah a hundred bucks Katie yeah oh yeah how about James. No, 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 She would, her eyes would get big and I could see she made, the wheels turning. Oh. She may decide she's not even thirsty anymore. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's $100. Katie, no, I trust her. She'd put it in her purse. She would bring back, if I said bring me back change, you know, she's a little bit more responsive. That's the oldest child. The youngest, no way. And that'll last all the way up. <laughs> I'm certainly more responsible than my uh, sisters. Oh boy! If you're wondering, <laughs> <laughs> you know it's a dangerous thing is out at the softball fields they take Venmo. I don't even have to have cash. Oh, I don't know if that's at dangerous the con- at the concession stand. It's probably better. Well, sometimes it's good if I oh I don't have any cash. I can't get an yeah. onion burger tonight. Oh, oh, I can get two. <laughs> I get an unlimited. Oh, that's true too. <laughs> that is true too. Well, you think the. Uh, Wolves? Are they really going to sweep the defending champs? I think I kind of hinted at that yesterday. That I, maybe not sweep, but I had an inkling that they were good enough to win this series. Uh, that is that uh, that is clearly the truth, right? They are rolling their defense without Gobert, mind you. By the way, hats off to him. Yeah, Gobert went to. Re- the birth of his first child missed the game they didn't miss a beat hey take a couple weeks <laughs> relax we got this enjoy your family time no they're good they're good denver is um i don't want to say a mess but they got to figure some things out <laughs> i got no internet so i don't know <laughs> dakota because the first time i gave my daughter twenty dollars for the concession stand she asked me to come help her carry her two loaded hot dogs, two cookies, two Gatorades, and a soda. <laughs> she worked out the math to where she could spend all 20 that's, of the dollars. <laughs> that's actually really impressive. That's impressive. Oh, that's funny. That's about the way it goes with me. I, it may not happen in the first trip, but if you just pay any attention, the last couple of times we've been at Ackley Park, that knothead's been running around every time. He, he's like Brad Pitt on Ocean's Eleven. Every time I looked over there, he's, he's eating, eating something. something. <laughs> yes. Every time. Yes. He's eating something. I'm like, man. I guess, Kids got to eat. I guess congratulations on stretching that 20 for two games. Yeah. Not asking for more. Yeah. But maybe simmer down there. And if you quit running around, maybe you gain some weight. <laughs> what do you uh, think? You think the Wolves? <clears throat> I just don't believe that Denver's going to go that quietly. But the problem is... I mean, with what you see Jamal Murray last night throwing that heat pack on the floor. Yeah, that was a little childish, yeah. And you would have to think that there's a fair chance he doesn't play game three due to suspension. You think so? Man, I have to think so. And he also made the money sign. Did you see that? Kind of at the same ref. You know, when they do that, like, like you're getting inferring paid. they're paying you to yeah. make these calls. Yeah. That stuff, if there's one thing Adam Silver – will kind of buck the players on it's when they try to make those insinuations that you know with the with the rise of gambling in sports and the acceptance of gambling by the professional leagues because they're you know all in cahoots and they get it and and i thought it started with with uh coach malone the way he at that one point early in that game he came all the way dang near the free throw line to get right how does he not get a team i was wondering where is how is he not not get thrown out thrown out the game before, Anthony Edwards turned and looked at a guy and got a technical foul. Malone comes flying to the free throw line to to rip an official, and nothing happens. The officials ripping him right back. You see, you can see yeah. the back of his head, but he was yelling right back at him. And I, I thought he's not only going to raise his hands to give a tee, he might raise Maybe his throw fist him out. And, or throw him out. Mm-hmm. I thought they were going to go fisticuffs. I just but, don't. But my point I is think that they'll when sweep they them. see their coach do that. You know, but and then I don't know. I don't know about Murray because the on one hand, yeah, that stuff can get you uh, suspended or fined or both. But we've seen in the past where Silver is really reluctant to do that to star players. 
That's true. And, and the truth of it is, <clears throat> he's not 100% healthy anyways. You can tell that knee's bothering him, and that's been the problem with Jamal Murray. The one he quit throwing his heat pad on the bed or on the floor. The he, one time he's been healthy, they won the whole thing. Yeah, you know, completely healthy and you know more uh, experienced enough to do it. But I don't think they're going to sweep them. And it wouldn't shock me if Denver found a way to get back in this series. But man, right now, it just seems like the the Wolves are like a pack of wolves. Man, they sense the weakness and the frustration of, of Denver, and they're just absolutely exploiting it. And even Edwards wasn't great to start, but Cat, Cat was. And, man, mm-hmm. that defense, they do. They absolutely swarm all over the floor. Knicks, Pacers, that was fun. It was a fun ending to that game. A horrific call on uh, uh, Miles Turner with the moving screen. I mean, defense – Defensenzo, what happened to the flopping rule? You remember how you yeah. remember how big a deal that was a couple of years ago? Hey, we're going to institute this flopping rule. It's going to be a technical foul. Mm-hmm. You're going to get suspended and all this. Last night, Dante Divincenzo absolutely just flopped in the last what fifteen seconds of that game and gets the call inside Madison Square Garden, and the uh, the Knicks hold on one twenty one one seventeen in a game one win. But seriously. I mean, what happened to that? That was such an emphasis by the league just a couple of years ago. And now it seems like it's completely gone by the wayside, and now it's almost encouraged. Now that's a good point. It wasn't an automatic T. If they ruled it a flop, yes. Yeah. And that was clearly a flop. Can you challenge it? Can you? Is that a challengeable? Hey, we think that was a flop. Can you go to the monitor? They challenged it. Oh, they did? And they held it. They, yeah, again, they I didn't watch because I was watching weather. But They upheld the call. Yeah. I mean, it just... Yeah, I don't know. It was one of those, you know, it's easy to fall into that that uh, thought process of, with the Indiana fans of a total conspiracy to help the Knicks, a team that hasn't been very prominent in the league and you know good and well the league would love them to be back on, on center stage because of, you know, you look around – Guess who's not there this year for rain, for ratings on the TV? Uh, no LAs. No no LeBron, no, no KD, no, no, no Steph. No Steph. The stalwarts of the league that are now out in the first round or even before that. No I Miami, mean, no yeah. Chicago. I mean, I mean it's, our, our large markets are – who's left in the large market? We, New York. Denver, New York. Is Denver a large market? I don't think so. Boston. Boston, of course, yeah. Yeah, there's always that. But here's the deal, Indiana. Guard Brunson. I mean, stop him from scoring 40-plus. Fourth straight 40-point game in the playoffs for the Knicks. Well, that's, that's he's becoming a, a legend. He's, yeah. I think it's also kind of cool, and they mentioned this on the broadcast last night, Kevin Harlan and Reggie Miller. Or no, no, no. They were in a different game. Uh, it was Brian Anderson and uh, Van Gundy, maybe. Anyhow. But as soon as the fourth quarter started – the Knicks got, had three guys take over, and who were they? All those Villanova guys. Josh Hart, Jalen Brunson, Dante Vin- DiVincenzo. That's and, and they cool. just kept on referencing, like, you know, this is this is what they learned at Villanova, is to take over in the key moments, and they absolutely did. And so the Knicks win game one. I think Indiana will probably be kicking themselves for not winning that game. That was their chance to steal one of these first two in the garden. They didn't get it done, and so now kind of behind the eight ball going the rest of the way in that series anything else i'll make the plea we can probably talk about it a little bit more another day nhl playoffs are awesome yep. round two getting going right now dallas beat uh the the knights the golden knights of las vegas four games to three one game seven on sunday now they start against colorado the avalanche in the Western Conference, Edmonton's still going, which means Connor McDavid. They're fun to watch. Fun to watch. Well, it, I know everybody says, well, I don't know the rules. Well, I don't know the rules. You don't really have to. It's just, it's hey, intense. You, you watch enough, you'll figure it out. You will, and it's and it's just a really intense, fun yeah. watch. It's fast. Everybody that likes soccer, because of the, you know, the, Watch the NHL playoffs. It's it's way more fun. Yeah. 
Yeah, I admit I I have not. I in the past, recent past, I've watched a lot. Well, now the Thunder are playing. Yeah, you can blame the Thunder for not me mm-hmm. for me not really watching. But if um, but because even like last night, I'm watching the basketball because I what's this mean for the playoffs and. But yeah, it's it's uh it's fun if you get a chance watch it. Yeah, NHL NHL playoffs are great, yep. absolutely great. Don't forget Sean Wilson, Big Elk TV throughout the day. He will have updates from the Class Four A Boys State Golf Tournament, Shangri La. The last, the final eighteen of fifty four holes is today. You have the score updates on the, on our Big Elk TV Facebook page, video updates on Big Elk TV all throughout the afternoon. Everyone have a great Tuesday. We'll be back tomorrow. Skinny on Sports right here on the Sports Channel. You've been listening to the Skinny on Sports podcast with Aaron Cow. Be sure to hit that subscribe button to get alerts of when the latest podcast is available. Thanks for listening. That ball is blistered to right. Way.